What's up everyone, Patrick here, welcome back. And moving on to another linear systems example. So you are debating between two party rooms to rent for your birthday. One charges a flat fee of $150 plus $20 per hour. And the other charges a flat fee of $210 plus $10 per hour. For how many hours would you be indifferent between the rooms? Now, these kinds of questions, where you're dealing with cost can be worded in a different way when they're saying for how many hours would you be indifferent if you see something like this come up in a question they're basically saying how many hours would it take for both costs to be the same for you to be indifferent between the rooms they're asking for when are the costs the same so that's another way this kind of question can be worded i just wanted to show you a different uh, scenario that can come up, but both of them mean the same thing. Now, being indifferent, obviously, there's other factors like you may like one room versus the other, but in this particular example, we're just strictly focusing on the costs. Okay, so we have to find out for how many hours would the cost of both rooms be the same. And so, what we want to do is create algebraic expressions for both of these scenarios. So what I'm going to do is introduce two variables. I'm going to let C equal the total costs of the rooms. And then I'm going to let H equal the number of hours that you're renting the rooms for. And so notice there's two party rooms. So let's, um, let's work with room number one. Let's create an equation for it. So it charges a flat fee of 150 plus $20 per hour. So let's say you rent it out for two hours. You would pay 150 plus 20 times two, which would be 150 plus 40, which would be a total cost of 190. Okay, so the 150 you're always going to be paying. So the C, the cost is going to be 150 plus 20 times the number of hours that you rented for, 20H. Right? In this case, it was 2. So we plugged in 2 for H. But this is the general formula here for room number 1. For room number 2, what does it say? What's the cost going to be? The cost is going to be a flat fee of 210. So notice that the flat fee, the fixed fee is higher, but then the variable fee, the $10 per hour is lower. So then we'll have plus 10 H like that, right? So those are both the equations for the costs of both rooms. Now we're trying to figure out what, when are both costs going to be the same? So what we can do is we could just use substitution, we could plug in this for this C. When is this cost, right, which is this right side, equal to this cost, which is that. So we can make just both of those equal, and then we're gonna have one variable to solve for. So we could take this, plug it in here, or we could take this, plug it in here, right? We're gonna get the same equations. We're just basically making both costs equal. So it doesn't matter which you put on which side, I'll write 150 plus 20H is equal to 210 uh, plus 10H, like that. And notice now we have an equation with one variable to solve for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all of the variables to the left side just to keep it positive. We have a 20 here and a 10, so when we bring the 10 over, we'll have 20 minus 10. And then all the numbers I'll bring to the right side, so the 150 I'll bring over. So we'll have 20H minus 10H, right? This comes over, equals 210. The 150 comes over, it becomes a negative. This would be 10H. This here would be 60 divided by 10 divide by 10, h is equal to 6, like that, right? So this here represents the number of hours you'd have to rent both rooms for the costs to be the same, okay? So that's the answer to the question. Then you could confirm it. You could take 6, you could plug it in to both of these. So you'd have... Um, let me write the solution here. 
I'm actually going to show you also graphically how it looks like just so if you get asked more questions with something like this, you could understand it better. So with six hours, we'll have 150 plus 20 times six, which would be 150 plus 120, which would be 270. They may ask that as well. What's the cost of each room when both costs are the same? So that would be the answer, 270. And then over here, notice we get 270 as well because we'll have 210 plus 10 times six which would be 210 plus 60, which would give us 270 as well, right? So at six hours, both costs are the same. You're indifferent to both rooms. Now, I want to quickly show graphically how this looks like. Okay, this is just going to be a rough graph. So we have the cost, right? The cost is the dependent variable. It, re it uh, depends on the number of hours. So the number of hours is going to be down here. Now, if we're to graph both of these, these are in like y equals mx plus b form, okay, where the fixed fee for both of these is like the b value or the y-intercept. So if you rent it out for zero hours, you still have to pay that fixed fee, right? So if you rent it out for zero hours, you're still going to pay the fixed fee. So the fixed fees are going to be over here, and then the 10 and the 20 are like the slopes and then the x which is the independent variable is the h all right y equals mx plus b form you could rewrite these as 20h plus 150 as well okay that's another format this could be and you could have 20h plus 150 and then that's more like that mx plus b form same thing here 10h plus 210 mx mx plus b so if you were to graph these, let's start with this one. What you would have is 150. So let's say 150 is like over here. That's where it's going to start. But then you have 20 as a slope. So it's a larger slope than 10. So it's going to be a more steep slope. So it's going to be, uh, let's say like that. Right. So a lower flat fee, lower fixed fee, but then each hourly fee is higher so it's going to be more of a steep line then the other one has a higher initial fee of 210 but it has a lower hourly fee of 10 okay so the slope is going to be less steep okay so that slope is going to maybe look something like this okay again this is not to scale you could graph this on a graph or uh, on graphing paper or you could graph both lines on decimals if you want a more accurate graph. But this is approximately what's going to happen. So um, this line represents room number one, and then this one represents the cost for room number two. And what's happening is at this point, that's going to be at six hours. Both costs are going to be the same. It's going to be at 270. This point of intersection is six and 270. And sometimes these kinds of questions will also ask, when is it better to rent, for example, room number one than room number two? Well, the cost is going to be lower for room number one. Notice this. It's below this if you're renting it out for less than six hours. But if you're renting it out for more than six hours, notice that one is going to cost more than two, right, for any hour. Above six, the cost here is going to be lower than the cost there. So drawing these graphically can help with those kinds of questions. It's a popular kind of question that if you're renting it for less than this indifferent point, which room is better? In this case, room number one would be better because the cost would be lower than room number two. But if you're renting it for more than six hours, then room number two would be better because the cost is going to be lower than room number.